becoming a storyteller. It actually evolved because I worked at the Cherokee Heritage Center. When I worked at the museum, people from all over the world would come. We have school groups coming, they would take a tour of the ancient village, and when they would come inside, there, there were lots of fun. The foreigners were extremely interested in all aspects of Native American culture. Uh, college students were lots of fun. Tiny children were lots of fun. Elders were lots of fun, but nobody wanted teenagers. You get a group of teenagers, and they're coming in a dripping attitude. They come walking up, and they look at you like this. And you stand there. And I'm looking at these teenagers. There's 16 walking towards me. They're dripping attitude. Nobody wants to take the tour, so I take it. I bring them inside. I start talking about the Cherokee history and Cherokee culture. They're not interested at all. We get to the first house structure, and I start talking about the house structures and how the Cherokees build their houses. Again, they're not interested. It's a house, man. I see it. It's a house. So I'm sitting there. I'm trying to get them interested. The teacher's trying to encourage them by threatening them. I'm going to test you over this later. And an idea popped in my head. I don't know where it came from, but eventually it leads to storytelling. Because what I did was I pulled some girl out and I said, Today we're going to illustrate how the Cherokee uh, families got together. So today this is going to be your Cherokee woman. Grab this girl, pulled her out, and her eyes got this big. Set her right beside me and said, This is your Cherokee woman. And so she starts doing this, I'm the Cherokee woman. So then I grabbed the next boy right close to her and said, this is her first husband. And everybody started laughing, and I had their attention. She went through a number of different husbands. I explained how the clan system showed up because she had all these children. They're all going to follow mom's line. We don't know who dad is. This one gets killed by a bear. This one's a bad hunter. Get rid of his clothes. Throw his clothes outside the front door. But I pulled out one kid after another. When I finished that, I put them back into the tour, and we kept on going. But I noticed that they remembered it, and they remembered it really well. So I started doing that with all aspects of the tour, uh, going in the council house, pulling people out, telling them, this is going to be your clan, this is what you're going to do for your tribe. And it worked really well. It eventually led to storytelling, because that's what I do when I do storytelling. When I use kids to come up there, be the bear and the wolf and the deer and the panther, I pull them out, and they pantomime with me. And it all developed from that. The first time I started doing storytelling for the museum also had to do with school groups. The school buses pulled up, and I remember there were two of them. A um, the woman came out, and she was young, she was pretty. It's probably her first year teaching, and she says, all the kids, come out, come out of the bus, and they come out like this, blah, and they're running everywhere. And she's like, stop, don't do that. We don't do that. We behave ourselves. We're good little beavers, you know. We're this class, we're this good little beaver. We man, no, they don't care. They're running everywhere. The next bus door opens up. That teacher comes out. Looks like she's been teaching for 40 years. Those kids come out and they line up and they grow quiet. And you can see all the other ones, la! They see this other teacher come out and they go, whoa! And then poof, they all line up. So I realized that's the one that's in charge. So I walk up to her and she says, I have two school buses. I have 60 children. I want to split them up into two groups. Can we do that for the tour? I said, yes, we can. She says, good, I like you already. We go to the front of the museum where the columns are. She says there, she gets all her kids all lined up, divvies them up, which one's gonna be where. And they go inside the museum. And they're gone. They're gone for about maybe 30 minutes. And then the door burst open. Here comes the first group. Ah, running out. And again, the little woman says, stop, we don't do that. No, 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 quit, stop. She's right behind them, trying to corral them. She's like trying to herd cats. You can't herd cats. Cats do this. And they look at you and don't care. Unless you take some food and shake it. And then they're right beside you. They're your best friend. Same thing with Cherokees. Free potluck dinner. All right, boom, we're there. Let's line up and get some food. So we're sitting there. And I'm watching all these kids running around. And as I'm sitting there talking to the teacher, she's still trying to get them all lined up, especially this one little kid named Jerry. Jeremy, Jeremy, put that down. Jeremy, quit. Jeremy, stop. Jeremy, don't do this. Jeremy, she's going to see you. Jeremy doesn't care. He's running around everywhere. The other teacher comes walking out and makes her way down. As she starts to walk out and make her way down, boom, everybody sits down. And you see Jeremy running poof, from where he was to sit down. And she comes walking up. She says, my group's still inside looking at the art exhibition. Is it okay for them to sit out here? And I said, yes, it's fine. And so she turns and looks at all those kids and she says this, you are representing your school. You will behave yourselves as good young women and men, especially you, Jeremy. And then she walks off and she's gone. 10 minutes for a child to sit still in eternity. So eventually they're sitting there and they're scratching, they're doing this, and after a little while they start pushing each other. And the next thing you know, poof, they're up and they're running around again. And again, the young teacher's behind them saying, stop, please don't quit, she's gonna see you. You're gonna get in trouble, I have to put you on the bus. I'm gonna count one, 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 two, two, two. I said two, but they don't care. And Jeremy's attacking things, trees, the fence, the yard. He comes running right past me. I look at him and says, how are you doing, Jeremy? And he goes, how do you know my name? 
And I said, I'm an Indian. I know these things about you. And he goes, whoa. And he runs and tells his friend. He and I were like this. We're blood brothers. I bet you if I cut my hand, you cut yours, we're rubbing together. We'd be blood brothers. I looked at him and said, you watch too much TV, Jeremy. Go play. So he runs and he runs. He's playing. He takes his stick. There's a trash can out there. Drives a stick inside the trash can and says, I killed the monster. Ha ha, the Kraken's dying. He's stirring it. As he's stirring that stick inside that trash can, there's trash in there. It's springtime. There's pop cans in there. Pop has sugar that hasn't been drunk and it attracts bees. So you can hear them. You can see them start to crawl out. Jeremy's classmates are doing this. Whoa, they're backing up. Not Jeremy. Ha ha. We're sitting there, we're watching, and then we hear this. Ah! And he comes running out. That bee stung me. We looked at him. We got him a bigger stick, and we said, here, go stir some more. He just looked at us and walked off. Because if we had been little children amongst our aunts and uncles and done something that silly, that's what they would have said. Here, do it again. Now I'm going to take my camera out and film you. It'd be on YouTube now. Put it, show everybody. Because I had a cousin do that one time. Came running in my aunt's house and said, I burned my house. My hands. And, Child, how'd you burn your hands? Sit there, got the water on it. He's like, I was playing with matches. Here, oh, got another box of matches. Here, do it again. I've never seen an Indian set themselves on fire before. Might be fun. But that was my aunt. That's how we grew up. So they're sitting there. They're running around. Teacher's still getting more frustrated. I look off in the distance. A car pulls up. A man gets out. Remarkably, he looks like an older version of Jeremy. He's walking around looking like this. And then he sees us. And then I see his look change. And he starts making a beeline straight for us. And I realize I've seen that dad walk. That dad walk means you're going to die. So I'm looking at Jeremy about to die. And so I said, do you want to hear a story? And they went, ah, yeah. Boom, and I sat down, and that's where I told my first story. After I'd finished the story, all the kids were sitting out there along with the teachers, and they were, they were happy. They had finished the story. They all walked inside to take the tour. Parents were happy. Teachers were happy. The kids were happy. Jeremy was still alive. And they leave, and I don't think anything about it. Barbara Gurdy, G-I-R-T-Y, in case anybody wants to know who to blame for all of this years down the road. Barbara Gurdy had seen me. She was working for the group tours for the museum saw me out there doing the storytelling. And she came walking out after the group left. She says, that was really nice. You told a story for those kids. I didn't know you were a storyteller. I said, I know a couple. I heard it from my dad. And she goes, oh, really? Well, good job. Shook my hand. I said, oh, thank you. Do I get a raise? No, you don't. But good job. All right. And walks off and leaves. Again, I don't think anything about it. But a week goes by. My boss, who's in charge of maintenance and the village, Perry Van Buskirk, National Treasure, comes walking up to me one day, says, hands me paper, says, here, look at this. So I look at the paper, and it says, come to the Cherokee Heritage Center. Learn about your genealogy. Learn about the history. Learn about the Trail of Tears. Learn about Adam's Corner. Visit the art show or the gift shop. Go to the ancient village. Learn about basketry, pottery. And while you're out there, talk with Robert Lewis, storyteller. I looked at Perry, and he said, you started something. I said, I guess I did. He said, I guess you better learn some more stories. I said, yeah, I guess the better. So I started going and gathering stories, and now that's how come I have a hundred stories in my head.